Hello everyone. So again, welcome back to our latest lecture session. So until now, I guess we are discussing precipitation and dissolution. And I believe in the last couple of sessions, we have been looking at applications, right? And I think in uh, the last session, we have been looking at uh, the addition of uh, coagulant in the form of FeCl3, right? And how, let's say, uh, you know, the relevant precipitation and uh, how the effects on sweep uh, flock and also charge neutralization uh, go through. Right, let's just quickly uh, have a brief about what we discussed. So we were adding a uh, source of Fe3 plus, right? And we saw that under uh, when there is no alkalinity, right? Uh, that the pH fell to uh, 3.5, right? Upon addition of this source of Fe3 plus, and why is that? Obviously, because uh, ferric hydroxide complexes are formed, uh, thus releasing H plus, right? So thus obviously you would expect a drop in pH and that's why I believe we saw that the pH dropped to 3.5. Yes, and I think we saw around 98% precipitation of the Fe3 plus, right? And in the second case, we looked at a case where we had some alkalinity and also initial pH of 8.2 or 8.3, I think, right? And then obviously because you have alkalinity, what is alkalinity now? It's uh, acid neutralizing capacity, right? So again, in that particular system, we had HCO3 minus, right? And thus, obviously, it can neutralize any uh, protons or H plus released into the solution. Thus, I believe you saw that after addition of this FeCl3, right, you did not see a great drop in pH. I think the final pH was around 7.1 or something like that, right, uh, after addition of FeCl3. And we saw that it was still around 100%, uh, what do we say, uh, precipitation of Fe3 plus, yes. Right, and this is what we understood that, right, uh, it, uh, in general we know that uh, the flocculation or coagulation uh, goes through in uh, two mechanisms, right, primarily anyway. So one would be charge neutralization and the other one would be the sweep flock mechanism. Obviously for the sweep flock mechanism you need to have, what do we say, the precipitate being formed, uh, which in this case is the ferric hydroxide, right. If you remember that, we had the FeOH thrice solid being formed, right, and thus will assist in the sweep flock, right. But obviously, uh, there is no point in adding uh, any further base, right? That was a part of the question too, because adding further base would only increase the net uh, negative charge, right? Or decrease the net uh, positive charge on the complexes, if any. And that obviously would not assist in charge neutralization in any manner. So obviously, you know, as uh, it is for this particular scenario of pH 7.1, where we had more or less 99% uh, or 100% precipitation was good enough. Uh, and we did not need to add any further uh, base that was our uh, particular uh, uh, logical reasoning the last time, right? So let us say for now we are uh, partly done with precipitation and obviously we are going to look at the other relevant aspect which is uh, solubility, right? I guess you know that is self-explanatory, right? I think the process of the solid dissolving into uh, what we say aqueous species, that is uh, what I believe we uh, discussed in the initial class, right? So obviously how am I going to uh, measure solubility though? is the amount of uh, solid that will dissolve or that dissolves uh, per unit volume of solution at specified conditions I guess, right. So again, the amount of solid that would uh, dissolve per unit volume of uh, the solution, right? Or more or less the total amount of your particular, uh, uh, what do we say, compound that would be in the solution, right? Amount of solid that dissolves would more or less be equal to the total amount of your particular compound that will be in the uh, solution, yes? So let us look at uh, how to go about this now. So let us say by hand, how am I, how are you going to go about it, right? So here obviously you are going to start with the assumption that there is a solid phase in equilibrium with your water as in let us just take an example let us say, let us say I have some uh, precipitates here and this is my water here. So there is going to be equilibrium between the solid phase and the uh, aqueous phase, right? Now I want to uh, find out the concentration of the relevant compound let us say the in the water or aqueous phase that is going to be in equilibrium with my solid as in if the solid was CaCO3, right? you know that it is going to be in equilibrium with Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus, right? And so obviously what are we trying to find out? We are trying to find out the concentration of uh, this calcium. But keep in mind that we, when we talk about uh, what do we say solubility, we are not just talking about let us say 
the free metal or such though. We are talking about the total concentration. As in when we talk about uh, solubility, we are talking about C A total per unit volume or C A total, right. It is not just C A 2 plus. Why is that? Because as you know, there can be other complexes formed and such, but we consider them to also be soluble species. For example, in this case, we can have calcium hydroxide complexes formed too, right. But still that will add to the total calcium that is present in uh, the aqueous phase, right. So, whenever we calculate solubility, we do not calculate just let us say Ca2 plus or such or the free metal, we calculate the total component I guess, yes. So, let us see how to do that by hand. Obviously, let us say you know uh, in your component balance equations, you have x total, right. And let us say you have one other or sp uh, specified uh, variable usually pH, right. So, for example, the question uh, not question I guess, the scenario would usually be uh, you have this salt present let us say CaCO3 and let us say the pH is around uh, 7, right. So, what would be the uh, total concentration of uh, calcium present in the uh, solution? So, that is nothing but calculating the solubility. So, again that is just setting up the uh, balance equations. So, you can set it up x total or let us say in this case C A total, right as a function of H plus, right uh, as a function of H plus and then just solve for it because you know the pH I guess, right. So, again that is relatively straightforward, uh, but I am uh, thus I am going to skip that, but we look at how to get this done by Wiemann-Tech, right. So, let us move on to Wiemann-Tech, right and here I am going to specify the possible infinite solid. So, there are different aspects here uh, as in as you can see you can specify an infinite solid phase or you can specify a finite solid phase, right. Again the key is that let us say if you have a uh, relatively little uh, or very little solid phase, right. So, it obviously will dissolve, right, but we do not know if the equilibrium will be reached before the solid has completely dissolved, right or it has not reached equilibrium even after all the solid has dissolved, right. So, obviously, let us say you know uh, we have only 1 gram per liter or a finite solid. So, that you can specify in the specify finite solid phases, but let us say you are looking for an infinite solid as in there is an inexhaustible amount of your particular solid that is going to be in equilibrium with your solution, right. So, you are going to use let us say specify infinite solid phases, right. Again I am going to try to uh, you know explain this in a better manner hopefully. So, when you talk about specify uh, uh, finite solid phases in which scenario would you look at let us say when you have a limited amount of solid, right and why does that matter? Let us say I have 1 gram and it is of a relevant uh, solid and that is in uh, equilibrium with let us say 1 liter of a particular uh, solution rather than 1 gram let us choose 1 milligram I guess, right. So, let us say rather than 1 gram I have 1 milligram of solid let us say and that will be in equilibrium with let us say 1 liter of uh, uh, water let us say, right. So, here let us say you do not know when the equilibrium will be reached. Will the equilibrium be reached let us say after 0.25 milligrams has dissolved, right or 0.75 or let us say when let us say 1.5 milligram dissolves in the liter of the solution, right. So, you do not know when the equilibrium uh, will be reached, right or uh, the amount of uh, soil that needs to dissolve before the equilibrium is reached between the solid and the aqueous phase, right. So, thus obviously, uh, when you have limited amounts of uh, solids present, you are going to have to specify that, right uh, in your particular Riemann tech uh, and obviously, if you have infinite solid, you are going to choose the relevant option there. So, for a one example, we are going to choose let us say an infinite solid phases, right and here I am going to choose calcite, right a source of CaCO3 and where is that, okay here it is calcite. I am going to say add, right back to main menu. So, again what are we trying to set up? I am trying to set up uh, the question in such a way that I, ha I have an infinite amount of calcite, right uh, or source of CaCO3, the solid and that is going to be in equilibrium with my particular uh, water, right. And what is the final concentration or the total concentration of uh, calcium that is going to be present in the uh, water. So, how do I do that? Obviously, I can need to specify some pH. So, let us say we will go with uh, at neutral pH, right and let us just run Mintech. And obviously, you have you know calcium just the free uh, uh, what do we say uh, compound, right Ca2 plus, right and also the relevant complexes CaOH, right, CaHCO3 plus and so on. But this is not what I want, what do I need? I need the total component or Ca total 
and this is what I have 3.84 into 10 power minus 3. So, for this particular condition right uh, what is the uh, solubility of uh, this calcium here it is 3.8 into 10 power minus 3 right and keep in mind that it is going to be different from your uh, just the C, Ca2 plus the cation right which is 3.7 into 10 power minus 3 but obviously considering the relevant complexes or such the Ca total is going to be relatively higher and this is the uh, solubility right uh, 3.84 into 10 power minus 3. So, let us just try to increase the pH and see if that is going to cause any particular uh, change here right. Uh, let me go with 9 right. Okay, and equilibrium mass distribution. So, I think it uh, decreased right, it actually decreased that is what you see here and that is what you see here too with increase in pH I guess that is what something we should have expected too right. So, here you see that the total uh, solubility or the solubility of calcium uh, decreased and it is now 3 into uh, 10 power minus 4 here right and again obviously uh, the uh, cation is going to be at a relatively lower concentration why is that you have the relevant complexes taking up the share of this particular uh, calcium right. So, let us go back to the main output menu let us do it at lower pH let us say at around 3 so let us uh, find out the relevant solubility here right and it should be obviously at relatively high concentration and here that is what we see here that the calcium concentration is at uh, relatively high value what is it now uh, 10 uh, molar concentration I guess right. So, at pH 4 we had what is it now uh, concentrate we have can, uh, concentration or pardon me solubility of calcium at uh, 10 molar or 11 molar right, but at pH 7 and I think at pH uh, 9 we saw that it was at 10 power minus 3 and 10 power minus 4 uh, uh, concentration ranges right. So, let us just try to understand this for a second I guess. So, let us try to understand why we see such a change obviously. So, the relevant reaction is CaCO3 the solid that is going to be in equilibrium with Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus right. So, and I think we looked at 3 cases one was at pH 7 when the concentration was in the order of around 10 power minus 3 and pH 9 when the concentration was in the order of around 10 power minus 4 and pH uh, what 4 I guess then the concentration was in the order of uh, 10 power 1 I guess right. So, why this particular variation or why this particular uh, increase in solubility right. So, more or less what do you see as you decrease the pH right uh, or maybe I should have written this pH 9 here right. So, as you decrease the pH you see that the solubility is uh, increasing right as you decrease the pH you see that the solubility is increasing yes and why is that let us just try to understand the system. So, let us say at higher pH let us say at pH 9 let us say right yes. So, uh, CO3 2 minus concentration as you know will be relatively high right at pH 9 again where is this from from our acid base uh, relevant background right. So, this is H 2 CO3 right and this is going to be H CO3 minus and this is going to be CO3 2 minus right and we know that pK 1 is 6.3 pK 2 is 10.3. So, as we are approaching let us say 9 let us say right somewhere around here you know that CO3 2 minus is going to be present right and also HCO3 minus yes. So, again at uh, what is it now pH 9 the CO3 2 minus concentration is relatively high and at pH 7 right around here you see that there is going to be no CO3 2 minus concentration right at pH 7 you see that there is no CO3 2 minus concentration. So, I am going to say at pH 7 it is almost equal to 0 and same case with pH 4 it is equal to 0 right or you know if not almost you know slightly I guess right. But at pH 4 you know that CO3 2 minus is not going to exist in solution. So, why is this important now as this calcite dissolves and forms Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus right yes. So, when will the equilibrium be reached now you are going to look at the saturation values yes, but if the CO3 2 minus concentration is high right 
Yes, what does that mean now, right? The equilibrium will be reached earlier, right? But let us say as in think of this now, if I increase the CO32 co minus concentration, the reaction to the words the left would be favorable. But if I decrease the concentration of CO32 minus, which is what I would observe at pH 7 and pH 4, right? Which reaction would be uh, favorable now? The reaction going from left to the right or the dissolution reaction? Makes sense hopefully, right? As I decrease the CO32 minus concentration, right? I am removing one of the products. So, CaCO3, the calcite would want to uh, dissolve, right? Or the dissolution reaction would be promoted. But obviously, as I keep increasing one of the products as in CO32 minus or let us say Ca2 plus, but in this case, obviously, uh, we are looking at pH and the carbonate system here, and that is why CO32 minus concentration. So, as I keep increasing the product here, it would want to form the reactant here, right? Uh, or the reverse reaction would be favorable. So, that is why the calcium concentrations would be obviously lesser, and that is what we see out here, I guess, right? Again, uh, so this is with respect to uh, solubility. So, by hand too, whenever you calculate, you need to calculate x total and not the relevant cation or anion, that is something that is important. Again, why is that? You are talking about the solubility, right? The total solid that would dissolve, or let us say that is going to be in the dissolved phase, the total uh, uh, solid, let us say, right? And okay, so we are done with this and we will move on to the next relevant aspect. So, it is competitive precipitation as well. So, until now, obviously, we have looked at cases, right, uh, when we considered only one particular solid or one form of the solid. So, with time, we know that it can form more stabler forms, right. I think amorphous to crystalline and then uh, remarkably insoluble crystalline phases and so on. But more or less with respect to only one type of solid, though, right. So, in general, as we know, because they are more stable or relatively more insoluble, the uh, most insoluble forms would be formed last, right. I think we looked at this particular case as in falling down the ladder, right. The most insoluble form will be formed last. The most soluble form would be formed first. Usually, most soluble forms, what are they? The amorphous forms, right. And usually, insoluble forms, they are the different types of the crystalline uh, structures, I guess, right. Crystalline forms, yes. And it, this is the way it would go through. And why would it try to be in the form of the most insoluble or the crystalline uh, form? Because that is the most stablest form, right. And obviously, everything in nature tends to be at uh, what do we say or reach its more stabler state, yes. So, but this as you uh, can remember, I guess we looked at only one particular kinds of uh, what do we say uh, solids as in ALO 3 solid, then the amorphous to crystalline or so on, right. But here, let us say you know, different uh, what do we say uh, metals can precipitate out in different forms now, right. So, for example, you know you can have CaCO3 precipitate out and you can also have calcium precipitate out in the form of COH twice, right. So, the key here is obviously it is competitive precipitation, right. But in general obviously in uh, the solution only one particular solid will uh, predominate or will uh, precipitate out. So, you want to be able to figure out which particular solid will uh, you know uh, predominate or precipitate out under the given conditions, right. And again why is that important? Because depending on the type of soil that precipitates out, the relevant concentration of Ca2 plus will be depend upon that uh, what do we say now uh, solid, right. Again, this is more or less similar to the controlling solid, right. So, here though we have different types of solids. So, how do we go about it? So, the key here is that you know any time the system will try to be relatively more stable, system tries to be stable, right. And what does that mean? That means, it prefers the insoluble solid. So, the preference is always for the most insoluble solid as in what does that mean? It means that the energy of the system I guess this is a way to understand it right. Uh, the energy of the system is relatively less or Gibbs energy right uh, G system this is something we discussed in some of the earlier classes too is going to be relatively less right or the system is going to be more stable when you have the more insoluble form. So, what does this more having this more insoluble solid form mean I guess. So, whichever let us say you know that CaCO3 solid can be in equilibrium with Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus and you know that CaOH twice the solid will be in equilibrium with Ca2 plus and OH minus, right. So, but obviously in solution you would not have two different concentrations of calcium, right. You will only have one particular co uh, concentration of calcium. So, you want to know which one 
uh, which solid would precipitate out, right. So, obviously, we are saying that the more insoluble form will precipitate out. What does it mean? So, more insoluble form means that particular solid which will give the minimum concentration or the lesser concentration of let us say in this case calcium will predominate, right. So, what is it that we are trying to say? As in if the calcium Ca2 plus that is in equilibrium with CaCO3 solid let us say, if that is going to be less than the calcium that is going to be in equilibrium with the CaOH twice solid, right. So, what does this mean now, right? that CaCO3 in this particular scenario is more insoluble that is why CaCO3 will precipitate out. But obviously, let us say if the Ca2 plus that is going to be in equilibrium with CaOH twice solid is lesser in concentration to the Ca2 plus that will be in equilibrium with CaCO3 solid, right. What does that mean? CaOH twice will precipitate out in this particular condition, right. So, whichever particular solid is more insoluble meaning whichever particular solid will lead to the metal concentration or the relevant anion being at or in general cation let us say right uh, being at uh, lower concentration that is what the system will favor and that is what we are trying to see right. So, let us try to uh, take this further I guess let us try to see uh, you know set up one particular equation for this. So, one case I am going to look at now which we are going to use later is. So, obviously, there will be one particular scenario when the concentration of calcium uh, in equilibrium with uh, what is it now CaCO3 will also be equal to the concentration of calcium in equilibrium with CaOH twice solid, right. So, let us try to plug that in I guess. So, what am I trying to do here? I am trying to plug in Ca2 plus CaCO3 solid, right, is going to be in equilibrium with the Ca2 plus in equilibrium with CaOH twice solid, right. So, the Ca2 plus concentration that at a particular scenario right the calcium that would be in equilibrium with CaCO3 is going to be equal to the uh, calcium concentration that would be in equilibrium with CaOH twice right. At that point you will have both the solids precipitating out right. So, when those two concentrations are uh, same what does that mean obviously both the solids will precipitate out. So, let us just try to write down the relevant uh, or you know equation I guess right. So, here what is the equation here we know that K solubility product for CaCO3 is going to be equal to uh, concentration of Ca2 plus into concentration of CO3 2 minus, right. And here K solubility product of CaOH twice is going to be equal to concentration of Ca2 plus times OH minus square, right. So, obviously, here the concentration of calcium. Ca2 plus in equilibrium with CaCO3, right. What is that going to be equal to K CaCO3 by CO3 2 minus? I mean, you do not need to mug these up, but let us just try to understand where we are going to end up, I guess, right. So, this is one relationship for the Ca2 plus CaCO3, right. And the other one here, and how can I express, uh, express this? Ca2 plus at CaOH twice, right is going to be equal to K C A O H twice by O H minus square, right. And again what are these equilibrium coefficients? Nothing but the solubility constants or the solubility products, right. So, here let us say, but in the second case to have it expressed in terms of H plus, if I multiply it by what now or O H minus, if I express that as K W by H plus and then transform it and K W let us say I consider that to be a constant. So, let us say I will call this new this thing uh, K star let us say CaOH twice K star into H plus square and obviously, what is this K star CaOH twice that is nothing but uh, K CaOH twice by uh, KW square in this particular case right. I am just trying to express OH minus as KW by H plus and the relevant transformation. So, here I have the other relationship and now I am going to equate these two as I see fit here, right. So, what do I have? Solubility constant CaCO3 by concentration of CO3 2 minus, right, is going to be equal to K star CaOH twice into H plus square, right. So, again what is it that we are trying to develop, right, we are trying to develop or understand the system when both the solids can precipitate out. That is why we have the concentration of calcium that would be in equilibrium with each of the solids 
to be equal, only then will we have both the solids precipitating out. So, right, you know, need to obviously mug up these uh, derivations or such, but obviously you need to understand how to uh, uh, get at them or understand the basics. So, again, uh, let us get this further. So, we are going to have K C A C O 3 is equal to K star C A O H twice into H plus square. And what is C O 3 2 minus, right? It is nothing but alpha 2 into C O 3 total, right. So, for a total alpha 2, right, I think uh, let me just write that down for sake of. So, what is alpha 2 now? Alpha 2 is nothing but C O 3 2 minus by H 2 C O 3 plus H C O 3 minus plus C O 3 2 minus, which is nothing but C O 3 total. So, the concentration of C O 3 2 minus is alpha 2 times the second or the third ionization fraction times the C O 3 total and that is what we have here. So, when this particular relationship is met, right, you will have both the solids precipitating out, right. So, before we go further, let us just try to understand when or visualize I guess, when is it that your calcium hydroxide is going to precipitate out and when is it that the calcium carbonate is going to precipitate out. So, obviously for this let us look at an log C pH graph that I have in the next slide. So, obviously the key here is that to understand which solid will precipitate out, you need to see that the calcium concentration that is in equilibrium with that particular solid will be lower, right. Why is that? Because the system wants to be at a relatively more stable state. So, here what do we have here? So, we have log C here and obviously it should be pH here on the x axis, right. So, log C I guess. So, what do you see here? Let us just try to understand the system here. You know, let us just look at the uh, solid line for here now. So, this is the C A 2 plus that would be in equilibrium with uh, calcium carbonate and this is the calcium concentration that will be in equilibrium with calcium hydroxide, right. So, what do you see here? You see that C A 2 plus C A C O 3, you know, this is the trend for this particular case, right. For C A O H twice or uh, calcium, this is the trend, right. So, obviously, in all this region here, right, until here, let us say, until this point, which particular, uh, what do we say, uh, solid will predominate? Obviously, that particular solid which will give the lowest concentration of calcium. So, obviously, as you see that in this region, the C A 2 plus at C A C O 3 is less than the C A 2 plus at C A O H twice. So, obviously, until this pH, right that where you see this intersection here, this is from theoretical log C pH graph, right. You can get this from Wim intake or such. So, again you see that C A C O 3 will thus predominate in this particular region. Again why is that? Because in this region as you can see C A 2 plus in equilibrium with C A C O 3 C A C O 3 is going to be less compared to the C A 2 plus that is going to be in equilibrium with C A O H twice, right. But obviously as you see in this particular region here or in this particular region here, right. And now, where is the uh, C A C O 3 concentration here? It is out here, C A 2 plus in equilibrium with C A C O 3, right? The red line, but the green line is the C A 2 plus that is in concentration with your, what is this now? Uh, C A O H twice. So, as you see in this particular region, the C A 2 plus in equilibrium with C A O H twice is less than the C A 2 plus that is in equilibrium with C A C O 3. And thus obviously, in this particular region C A O H twice is going to predominate, right. So, again now at this is what, so again let us try to understand this. So, at remarkably high pH C A O H twice the solid is going to be uh, precipitating out. So, again why is that? If you want to look at it, it is nothing but C A O H twice, right, uh, is going to be in equilibrium with C A 2 plus and 2 O H minus, right. Yes. So, at remarkably high pH what is happening here? So, at very high pH OH minus concentration is going to be very high, right. So, as in then which particular uh, what do we say the forward or the backward would be favorable? You would see that the backward reaction would be favorable, right. So, that would obviously lead to what now? More precipitation of COH twice and leading to lesser concentrations of CA2 plus, right. So, that is why you see that with increasing pH the calcium concentration that would be in equilibrium with COH twice keeps decreasing, right. Again why is that? Because as you keep increasing the pH the OH minus concentration keeps increasing and now the backward reaction would be relatively more favorable, right. And thus you would have more precipitation in the form of COH twice leading to further decrease in the calcium concentration that would be in equilibrium with the COH twice the solid. 
and that is why you see that at high remarkably high pH the CA wash twice predominates or will precipitate out pardon me and at uh, I mean it is not lower pH relatively lower pH CaCO3 would control right. So, that is the particular uh, aspect here. So, and one other aspect that I want to point out here is right. So, let us look at now let us say if you increase the concentration of CO3 total. So, this particular solid line was at one particular CO3 total right and here let us say here we have uh, CO3 total 1 and here we have CO3 total 2 right which is greater than CO3 total 1 and that is what we say here. So, before we go further let us just try to understand what this means for the uh, system now right. You know that CaCO3 the solid can be in equilibrium with Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus right CO3 2 minus right. So, for a given particular case of CO3 total 1 we looked at the earlier case for this solid line right. So, let us say though but I end up increasing the CO3 total how is the system going to change. So, here if I increase the CO3 total what does that mean I am increasing this particular uh, variable here. So, leading to which reaction being more favorable now the backward reaction compared to the previous case right. So, I am increasing the CO3 total that in effect means I am also increasing the CO3 2 minus concentration yes. So, if I increase the CO3 2 minus concentration what is going to happen now the backward reaction is going to be more favorable compared to the previous particular equilibrium right and so you are going to have more of the solid precipitating out what does that lead to that will lead to a decrease in CA2 plus concentration. So, that is why you would see that at greater total CO3 the Ca2 plus in equilibrium with CaCO3 is going to be lesser right and obviously that is the explanation we looked at here yes. So, and that is why obviously the equilibrium would slightly shift out here though right yes at a particular CO3 total this is the case where CaCO3 predominates, but when you increase the CO3 total you see that you know uh, there is a uh, much higher range to which uh, at which uh, CaCO3 would precipitate out again this is for our particular understanding right. So, let us uh, move on to the other particular aspect. So, here I guess we have predominance area diagrams yes and so I believe we are running out of time. So, I will just briefly look at what it is that we uh, need to understand or try to understand from this predominance area diagrams and we are going to continue this in the uh, next session. So, the name uh, is self explanatory right it is predominance area diagrams. So, for example, let us say you are trying to understand a system and you do not have let us say uh, the time or the patience to uh, go to that in relevant detail or look at v tech let us say. So, these obviously predominance area diagrams will give you a snapshot right in a overview of those particular regions right uh, at which a particular compound is going to predominate. So, that is obviously nothing but the predominance area diagrams right. So, I guess with that I will end uh, today's session and we will continue discussing this uh, precipitation and dissolution relevant aspects and hopefully uh, you know get it done by the next session I guess and thank you.